Hello again. We're going to take a first look at sound now because for so long our game has been absolutely silent and that's not very good is it? So what I've done, I've got two sounds here inside the folder that my game is in. So I've got a bullet and an explode. So we're going to use the bullet for when we fire and this explode sound when we hit a ship. <laughs> Graciously contributed by a good friend of mine. I'll make sure he goes in the credits. Can you tell it's his voice? No. It's just him going, <laughs> a bit obvious, but never mind. Let's um, actually make them. So we're going to import these sounds to our library. Library looks something like this at the moment. I'm going to go File, Import, and choose Import to Library. Navigate to wherever we are, Space Game, and I'm going to take both sounds. So it lets me do both, yep. Yeah. So import them both, and there they are in the library. The first method will start dead simple. I'm going to going to go into my turret. So I'm actually editing the turret symbol here. Let's have a look at the timeline, and we can see that when we fire, we actually play. So the easiest way to make a sound there without even using any code would just be to if I make a new layer here, we'll, we'll do it on there. We'll have a layer called sound. If I make a keyframe on that second key on that second frame, make a keyframe, and open up my properties menu, I can choose a sound and it'll look through your library and let you pick a sound. So I'm going to choose bullet.mp3. And the sync here I'm going to leave as event. Event just means play regardless of whether it's already playing, it'll start a new version of the sound. The effect, I've never had much luck with them if I'm honest, I'm not entirely sure they work without extra tampering. And then the repeat, we don't want it to loop and I only want it to play once, so I'm going to leave the repeat on one. Test my game there and every time I fire now we should hear that sound. I'll turn my volume up so the mic picks it up. And there we go. It's getting very annoying, but it feels like more of a game now. As soon as we get a bit of sound in there, it sort of makes us feel like we're really playing instead of just, I don't know, learning stuff. That's the easiest way to do things, but we're not here just to do things the easy way. We want to understand the various other ways of doing it. It's not always feasible to put a sound on a keyframe. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to remove that keyframe. In fact, I'll just delete the layer. What I'm going to do is hop into the turret class. Probably the easiest place to do it. I think we fire in here, don't we? Check the logic. If we're currently holding the mouse, fire and just make sure that we only fire when we're allowed to. Yeah. Problem we might have is that we trigger this sound more than once, but it's uh, not a massive worry. Okay. Waffle inside, let's let's actually do this. So we're going to have to make an instance of our sound which means if we go to the library, right click on the bullet sound here. I'm going to have to be careful because I've already got a movie clip called Bullet, so I don't want them to overlap. I'm going to right click and go to the properties of this, this sound and click on the action script box. And what I want to find is this export for action script. I'm going to have a video on this box later on, a whole video on one box. This export in frame one thing becomes important when you're doing the loading for your game, but for now we'll leave it ticked. The class, we can't use bullet because it's already taken, so I'm going to replace that with bullet sound. I'm going to copy the base class because we're going to need to import that. Just copy that text. Press OK or update. And go back to my turret class. So I'm going to import that sound library. A 
And in the variables for my turret here, I'm going to make a variable to store that sound. We could just store this in the level and make the level play the sound. I think that's the way I did it in the the example game. The level controlled quite literally everything. And I'd argue that's the best way to do it. But the, the implementation's the same, regardless of where you do it. So public var, we'll call it fire sound equals, well, it's just a sound, so tell it's going to be a sound. So I've set the variable up. Here in the constructor, when we make the turret, luckily there's only one turret. If we had lots of, uh, say for example, with the ships, it's not a good idea to hold the sound in the ship because there's so many different ships. You're going to be making instances of this sound all the time when there's really no need. The level, that's why I control things in a level, can just have one instance of the sound and play it for every ship. So we'll do that that way when we come to do the ship sound. In here I'm going to do fire sound equals new and I believe we called it bullet sound. At least I'm hoping we did. Make new instance bullet sound. Just save it at this point. And now whenever we want that sound to play, we type the variable name dot play. So where do we want to fire? Where do we want it to play? Well, we play the animation there, so I guess it makes sense to play the sound there. So we'll do fire sound dot play. Let's just check that this works, make sure it can actually find the sound we're after. And there you go. Very annoying. Let's do rapid fire just to make it even more annoying. Yeah, you get the idea. So that's working. As I've mentioned, I, that, that's not the best way. You should really have your main class control these sound just so you don't accidentally have loads of them because if we had more than one turret we'd be making more than one instance of this sound when we really don't need to. For the ships dying I'm going to do that in the level class. So I'm going to repeat the process of exporting my uh, sound. So I'm going to go back to the library, find my explosion sound, go to the properties this is a good example of the, the timeline issue because there is nowhere on the timeline we can do this sound. The ships only have one frame because the sprites and we don't want them to play instantly so we don't have a keyframe to place this on. Go to the action script, export for action script, leave the exporting frame one for now, we'll change it eventually. Give it a class name, I think we're okay with explode this time but to keep it consistent I'll go with explode sound. I've already copied that, so I'm going to paste that again into my level and press OK. In the level class, I'm going to import sound and make a variable. There's no particular reason why this one's public, unless I suppose the timeline needed to get to it. Let's make it protected. Protected var explosion sound. Now before I made it of type sound, we could just directly make it of type explosion sound. Was it explode sound? Yeah, explode sound. So it could just be an explode sound because we've exported it for action script, so it is actually a class. And you can see it there. So whereas in the turret I told it to be a sound, I could easily have just put um, bullet sound there instead. In the constructor, we'll set it up. Explode sound equals new explode sound. Or is it called explosion sound? Right, I'm going to rename that so it's the same, just with a lowercase. Lowercase version of that is fine. If I had an uppercase version there, that would break because you can't have a variable name 
that matches a class name. Make the explosion sound. And now every time we kill a ship, we want this to play. So let's find that part. In the do ships function. Here we go. So when we remove a ship, if the ship is dead, we do an explosion chain, we remove the ship, and let's play the sound. Explode sound dot play. Save it and test it. When we kill a ship, it should explode. Now that's going to get very annoying, so I should probably stop. Get a few of them. Ones. Yeah. Have a, a big explosion for when the player dies. <laughs> I can still hear him. Yeah. We could have a massive explosion for when the player died, I suppose. That's totally up to you. Uh, as I keep saying, we're not here to make this game, we're here to just learn how to do stuff. Seems like I can keep this video quite short because I will have to do sound again to allow you to mute it, for example, let the player c control the volume. We'll have looping sounds for the music, so we'll definitely have to do another video. I'm just getting very wary of time. There's a good chance I'll have to cut the, the series short, but what I'll do, I'll make sure I at least cover the key skills that I used to make the game, and you're just going to have to be imaginative with the way I applied them to get the final result. Definitely need to cover the loading system and uploading to Congregate, because it's always good to get your games out there. So I'll show you how to do that at the very least. But I do only have a few days left. And thanks for, thanks for sticking with me again. See you later.